just want to start out by saying how fired up I am to be back. Uh, fired up to be able to step into a program that already has such a great culture established where players understand effort and attitude. I would say that uh, the opportunity to coach for and with Coach Fickle again is really exciting to me. He's been one of the couple guys across the country that I've said throughout my career, if I had the opportunity to work with him, I would jump at it. And so to combine the opportunity to work with Coach Fickle and be a part of this program that he's established and continues to grow and combine that with being able to go home to Cincinnati where really my Division I uh, full-time linebacker coaching and, and coordinating got started, be it as a special teams coordinator. I mean, that's a great combination, and, and I'm just excited about that. So I'm here to talk ball. All right, Keith Jenkins, Cincinnati Inquirer, why don't you start us off? Hey, Mike. Pleasure meeting you, man. Welcome home, as you said. Welcome back. Um, I guess my first question is, there's been a couple notable uh, recruits who have decommitted because of, uh, and they directly cited Marcus Freeman's departure. I don't want to ask you about them. My question is, for a guy who's in the program who may not know a great deal about you, or maybe a player who's considering Cincinnati, a defender, who's like, who is Mike Tressel? What would you tell them? What will they get um, under Mike Tressel and in this Cincinnati defense under your leadership? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is I'm fired up that after being announced officially yesterday, that that allows me to start hit recruiting, start start rolling, start calling some of these guys that uh, have already signed with us in the past class or committed to us or our top our top targets going forward. So you know that allows me to actually get that ball rolling and start building some relationships with some of those guys. Um, Coach Freeman did a great job. There's no doubt about that, and he built relationships, and I'll be about building relationships too. And I've been in the Midwest for a long time, so. You know, the 300-mile radius, I think I have a very good handle on. And, th and then we'll move beyond, especially when there's connections. But what, what you'll get from me is um, a guy who ha has, has been there and run some very, very good defenses, some of the tops in the country, which UC's in that same picture right now. So I think that's a great fit. Um, a guy that's probably worked every single year with Coach Fickle and talked ball and traded knowledge and have very similar philosophies, um, as well as with Coach Freeman. I mean, him, Coach Freeman and I are good friends as well. Uh, you'll, you'll find a guy much like is always here. The energy, the teaching, the attention to detail, you won't ever think I have a bad day. I will, I will lift you up every single day. And my, my goal as a coach is to help players achieve their goals. And guys will understand that. They'll see that. I, I'm in a service industry as a coach, so they'll feel I'm here for you. And you could talk to our current guys. I've already told them um, I'm here for you. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? And that's a harder question to answer than you might think. But, uh, but I am here for the guys. We have a great belief in our defense at UC here players, coaches, and the likes. So it's a great opportunity to step into that. But uh, um, I don't think we'll miss a beat. I have coached, you know, shoot, my last five starting middle linebackers all active in the NFL at some point, every, every single one of them. Um, coached some great guys, have taken guys to the level that these guys want to achieve. They'll see that, and I think there'll be a smooth transition. One next to Chad Brendel from BearcatJournal.com. Coach, when you look at this team on tape, uh, I know you've been a, a four-man front guy uh, a long time. Uh, they ran a three-three-five. They ran some four-two-five, four-three. Uh, do you look at this and, and maybe see it as an opportunity to, to be multiple because of the talent that's on hand and, and your ability to attack uh, opposing offenses with different formations? Yeah. So if I was you, my first question would have been about scheme as well. And the truth of the matter is. We want to keep, keep people guessing a little bit. Um, probably Coach Fickle and my backgrounds are very, very similar. And I've been really impressed with the way that uh, Cincinnati's evolved, especially based on the league and, and the specific schemes they, 
and, and we see week in and week out. I've studied, we've talked, we've probably gone to some of the same visits and trying to learn and evolve. So there's some similarities in philosophy, but you're probably going to have to wait and see exactly how we line up most often to be truthful with you. I'm going to accept Justin Williams from The Athletic. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, plenty of ties. You kind of alluded to them early on between you and Coach Fickle. But knowing the success this program has had the past couple of years, especially last year and especially on defense, what do you feel like made you a good fit to, to step into a veteran roster and kind of a deep roster and, and take over a really successful defense? I think relationships, really. I think that um, Coach Fickle really emphasizes – uh, the relationships within the defensive staff, um, making sure that there's a great working environment. I think comparable philosophies is is important, um, but really it's it's about the people. It's about the people, and I, I really feel like getting in here for just a short amount of time. I have been. Uh, it's a great group of guys, and we're going to be able to work together really well. And and I do think that that probably was at the top of coach's list of who's the right fit here for this veteran group of defense and and you know the truth be told hey listen we got some great players here we're going to play to their strengths the last thing I'm going to do is is come in and try to teach an old dog and, and particularly really 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 good veteran players new tricks that's not going to be the case so there's there's definitely a philosophy match but more than that there's a mesh of personalities and people where we'll be able to work really well together. We're next to Charlie Goldsmith from the Cincinnati Inquirer. Go ahead. Um, how does your experience both coaching at Cincinnati and then recruiting really hard in the city of Cincinnati over the past 15 years better prepare you now for this job? Probably knowledge of people and, and, and knowledge of the place. There's actually probably a half dozen people that I've interacted with in the athletic department already that – were here last time I was around. So having some of those relationships helps you get a, get a kickstart. You know, know, knowing the city, knowing high school coaches gives you a kickstart. Probably um, in recruiting, there's a huge advantage because, shoot, I can't tell you how many high school coaches in the state of Ohio have texted me congratulations. You know, so they know me well enough that they have my cell phone and they're shooting me tests and they're saying congratulations. Oh, by the way, we got a tight end you better take a look at, or more specifically, maybe we got a linebacker or a defensive player you got to take a look at. So those relationships help. Also, the fact that uh, I have actively been recruiting some guys that I know will be recruiting here and, and have a legitimate chance to get because of proximity and because of. Um, their knowledge of me and Cincinnati. So that, that makes the transition a little easier, too. There's people out there that are trying to help the Bearcats and help me along with this. Next up is Brent Young from BearcatJournal.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, kind of an abnormal year where seniors are able to have an extra year of eligibility. How has the handful that have decided to come back for one more season kind of help with that transition as well. I mean, that's awesome. That speaks first and foremost to the culture of the Bearcat football program. That's what really impressed me. That's something when um, this opportunity presented itself as a possibility at first, you look at that, and when you see guys wanting to come back uh, for one more year, you're like, okay, wow. They, they, they believe in what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I'm also seeing them teach the younger guys. You know, I think there's some talent in, uh, you know, a lot of the younger classes, but specifically I'm looking at, okay, the class that signed last year, the class that just signed this year, and having those guys back again and wanting to work with the young guys, <laughs> that makes life a lot easier because a player-led team is always better than a coach-led team. If the players are lead, understand the expectations, are, are enforcing that, Man, you're in good shape. So I know the culture's right when I see those veterans wanting to stay around. We'll go next to Logan Lusk from the news record. Uh, congratulations, Coach, first of all. Uh, question I got for you. I just want to know a bit more about you and Fickle's connection, uh, your time at Ohio State. What kind of relationship is it really that you and Fickle share, and what makes you two such a good parent? 
Well, we we were a couple years at Ohio State together, and uh, fortunate to win a national championship in one of those two years, and and pretty comparable ages, to be honest with you. So it probably allowed us to form a bond right off the bat, um, and then staying in the same area, generally speaking, we've been able to almost annually, you know, be able to get together and, and keep the relationship going. So in a sense, um, sort of grow and evolve together, especially when at times we were running very similar schemes. And, and, and we, I think we just have a connection and a friendship and a philosophical match, you know, um, probably the connections with Jim Trestle and the connections with Mark D'Antonio also allowed us to keep the relationship growing because both of those people were, hey, yeah, we welcome you guys to come visit Jim Trestle. We welcome you guys to come visit Mark D'Antonio. Luke, come on up anytime. So those, you know, common threads right there have allowed us to stay close. Back to Chad Brendel from Bearcat Journal. Coach, there's been a, a lot of recruiting overlap between where you were at previously, Michigan State and Cincinnati, uh, since Luke took the job here. How much of an advantage does that give you coming in that you know a lot of these guys on this Cincinnati roster already, you know, from the recruiting trail, Malik Van and Justin Watley and Sammy Anderson? And is there an edge you get there where you some of these guys you already have a good relationship with? Yeah, I re actually, I think there is in terms of building the bond, building the trust. Those things take time. So any advantage, any early relationship you might have had is helpful. Um, I was actually really excited when just the rumors went out a week and a half ago or whatever that I was um, going to have the opportunity to take this position. The number of current Bearcats that, that texted me and said they were excited to have me and welcome coach and things like this because we did have enough of a relationship that they felt like they knew me and my number was in their phone and, and they reached out. And I actually felt awful because it wasn't official yet and it would have been uh, not legal for me to start a conversation right back at that point. But, um, yeah, that, that has given us a jump start. There's a number of guys on our roster right here at UC who I've known um, for a bit. We're next to Justin Williams from The Athletic. Who did you mention? playing to the strengths of this defense based on what you've seen and, and what you know about the, the guys that you've inherited what do you feel like are the strengths of, of this unit <laughs> so that's a hard question to answer without going right across the board position by position I'll, I'll tell you this I think that um, there's a belief that we match up one-on-one -on -one against anybody so like in the back end of the defense hey you you can call man every single snap, coach. We got this. There's that type of confidence. And they're very good at it, and we have the ability to play man for sure. But there's also the belief that, hey, we're good. You know, let me let me go. So um, having the two corners back, really good players, man. Okay. As a team that's majored in man, oh, sh that's exciting to have those two guys back as, as well as in the nickel spot. As, you know, that's – basically a third corner out there. Um, I think the depth of defensive line is really impressive. I think there are a number of guys, including, you know, new transfer in that I think there's a number of guys that can get out there and play. You don't very often see a college team that has a legitimate starting two deep at the defensive line. You know, specifically in the linebacker room, both inside backers are back and they're veterans and and they probably didn't have to be back but they love the program and and um love ball as well and and th and they understand it i mean shoot they'll be coaching me up so you could go across position and position but the bottom line is the the effort and attitude this is a group of guys that understand it and they play hard they believe in each other you know i'm watching guys that don't get shook if something doesn't go right you know, you could look um, even at the bowl game versus Georgia, regardless of the outcome. Hey, Georgia's got some dudes, so they made a couple plays, but no one was ever shook. No one ever lost belief. And as a result, 
you know, really good defense the whole day. So I think the strengths are, um, in addition to, I mean, yeah, we got an edge rusher that I wouldn't trade for anybody in the country. That that's that's awesome. So the strengths are not just in the talent. The, it's also the, the belief I see those guys having in one another, and and the belief in um, the Bearcat, the Black Cat brand defense. Really, that's that's there. So nothing shakes them. We've got time for a couple more. Let's go back to Keith Jenkins from the Stan Choir. Coach, you have a really unique perspective because you know you were here before when this program wasn't what it is now. I know you've had your own priorities at Michigan State, but now that you're back in the red and black, can you kind of speak on, from your perspective, how much this program has grown since you were last here and from 2004 to 2006? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's grown, and it's been a minute. If you guys uh, check out my Twitter right before this um, – Right before this little interview right here, I just tweeted out a, a throwback picture of my family in the stands at a UC game way back when. And, and believe it or not, it's, it's the old it, – what the players and other coaches call the old school C-Paw that's on their, on their shirt, you know. So I'm way back. The, the, the new C-Paw actually came into play when I was here. So I had the old school C-Paw at one point. And, and this uh, building that we're in right now, um, I was in this building the first year that it opened. You know, but the program as a whole, the climb has been really fun to watch. And quite honestly, I have a little bit of pride in the way this program's grown because I do think that uh, when I was here, previous stint, hadn't been to the bowl game in a few years when we stepped into this program and we were able to win two bowl games in three years and really kick-started things in the right direction and then um, – Hit a couple New Year's Six Bowl games in the next few years with a lot of the guys that I was a, had a part in recruiting. Not taking credit, but like those are guys that either we brought in or recruited, and you see them doing those things in national stage. We'll beat anybody type of situations. Um, and to see it continue on and Coach Fickle doing the same things, it, it's pretty neat to watch that. And I've always – felt a little bit a part of it in the mindset that, man, I love that place and I feel like I helped get that thing going a little bit. Small piece, small piece, but I felt a part of it. We've got time for one more. Justin Williams, why don't you close us out? Uh, you, you know, mentioned being that part of that D'Antonio staff and that was kind of the first of a few coaches who had success and then, you know, pretty quickly moved on to something else. You also talked about knowing Coach Fickle pretty well. Are you surprised that he has not taken that path, that he's kind of put roots, and even though he's had opportunities to go elsewhere, he, he's decided to stay? You know, not really. I think uh, his family values and the importance of of his family, I think, is first and foremost. And, and he's told me over and over what a great place this is. And uh, why, why, why uproot? when you feel like you're in a great place and, and you can continue to build on great things. So I'm a coach's kid, all right? My dad and my uncle have both told me from the get-go, if, if you're in a good place, man, make it a great place. Then make it the best place. Don't think the way to climb the ladder is by taking a million moves. And that's why I've been fortunate. Um, shoot, last 17 years of coaching, two spots. University of Cincinnati and, and Michigan State, of course. So um, not really, because he comes from sort of the same tree as me where, where I was taught, if you're in a good place, make it great, then make it the best. Uh, and it's certainly not jumping all over is what's best for, for a family, too. So it doesn't surprise me. And that's part of the reason I'm here, because my goal is not to move, you know, four times in eight years. That's, that's not what my background is. That's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to make what what I now I'd call a great place. How can we find a way to make it just a little better?